Good day, welcome to this week's midweek message, which is called Rediscovering Christmas. In order to do that, we need to discover a little more about what was going on in the world when Jesus was born. So 400 years before his birth, when the Israelites returned from exile, they were, went back in Jerusalem trying to rebuild the city and rebuild the temple. Importantly, they were still under Persian rule. And that came to an end in the mid fourth century when Alexander the Great came into power. He was that amazing military leader, came to power at the age of 20, had all those military campaigns. His campaigns are still studied today under military uh, academia. And he conquered the Persians and uh, came into power. So when he died, his dynasty was then divided among his uh, generals. And one of them was called a guy, was called Antiochus Epiphanes, a really horrible individual who actually thought he was God with a little G on earth. And he decided he would try and wipe out Judaism. This resulted in the Maccabean revolt. And uh, because he'd gone so far as sacrificing pigs on the altar in the temple, you can imagine what that did to the Jewish people. So finally, the uprising succeeded, and the temple was rededicated in 167 BC. This was called Hanukkah to celebrate the occasion, which is still celebrated today by the Jews and by Jesus. We are told in John chapter 10, verse 22 to 23, he also um, celebrated this event. So the Maccabeans, they continued to reign for uh, several decades until the Roman general Pompey conquered, conquered Jerusalem in 63 BC, and he killed lots of Jewish priests and Jewish leaders. And not long after that, Herod the Great, he persuaded the Romans to put him in power over the Jews. And um, he was this powerful, paranoid guy. And you remember Matthew tells us of how he was having babies killed at the time. And Jesus is born then under Roman oppressive rule. Now, to discover a little more of the real purpose of his birth, we go back to Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. And you remember that lovely picture of God creating humankind in his image to serve him, to love him, to walk with him, to steward his creation, and to have this living, loving relationship with him. That goes wrong in Genesis chapter 3, where humankind disobeys him. And the story is told there, 1 through 8, the consequences of that. And there is this discord between uh, the man and the woman, and then between humankind and God. The relationship is broken, and sin has entered the world. Now, that sin didn't just affect Adam and Eve. We are told uh, in Romans 5, verse 18, that uh, Paul writes, This trespass, this sin, resulted in condemnation for all people, because Adam and Eve were appointed as representatives of all of humankind. So you and I are affected by that. And there's now this hostility between humankind and God. Right there in the beginning, you know, Genesis 3.15, in the middle of all that hostility and struggle and conflict, we have the first um, foretaste, the seed sown of the gospel message, where it's written that between Satan and humankind, there will be enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And that fulfillment comes, of course, when Jesus comes into the world. He is born, the celebration of his birth over Christmas, he is born to die. He will give up his life um, in order that humankind will be reconciled to God. Humankind will have peace with God. So that was the, the first uh, message of evangelism right there in Genesis Chapter 3. So now we're coming to this absolute purpose why Christ was in the world and why you, if you're not yet a believer, have this searching, this longing for God. Uh, it's quite simple. Your sin, my sin separates us from God, from His love, His perfection, His grace, His goodness. And grace uh, comes to us once again over Christmas, this beautiful season when we remember the birth of Christ, when uh, He was born to die. On that cross, he conquered Satan. He conquered sin. He conquered death. And uh, in the Garden of Eden, 
humankind would die physically a little later on, but they would die spiritually. So uh, this is called the fall. So Jesus came to reverse the fall, to reconcile, to undo what Adam did. That's why he's sometimes called the second Adam. So uh, Paul says, uh, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Isn't that good news? And not counting people's sins against them. That's why you need to get into a Christmas Day service. Consequently, we can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, uh, we at Summer Strand United, tomorrow evening, Thursday evening, half past six, we're going to be singing carols together. It's an opportunity to invite unchurched, uh, unsaved, unbelieving friends. People love to sing carols. We will also share the gospel. And of course, the Christmas Day message, the light of the world into darkness. Father, I pray that all those listening to this message would rediscover the true meaning of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.